Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Myself, Sendam Narasi, working as assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science Engineering in Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Today, we are going to see on the topic in theory of computation, which is very, very important topic in our unit 2, context-free grammar. So, we are going to see the conversion of context-free language to context-free grammar in this video. So, what are the things we are going to see under this video? First, we are going to see the introduction of context-free grammar and then context-free language. And then we are going to see the conversion of context-free language to context-free grammar. Before going to this conversion, we need to know the basics of what is meant by context-free grammar. What is meant by context-free language? Then only we can know the conversion of context-free language to context-free grammar. So, first we are going to see the introduction to context-free grammar and then context-free language. First we are going to see the introduction to context-free grammar. So, context-free grammar consisting of a finite set of grammar rules which is a quadruple. So, this context-free grammar shortly will be calling as CFG in capital letter which is represented as NTPS everything in capital. So, what is meant by n means n is a set of non-terminal. So, normally we will be writing this non-terminal in a capital letter. Then t, t is a set of terminal. So, when we are taking the intersection of this non-terminal and terminal, nothing will be there, which will be what na? empty, nothing will be common. So, that only I have represented here n intersection t equal to null. Then P is nothing but the protection rule, else we will be calling that as a substitution rule. So, how we will be writing that protection rule means, we will be writing the non-terminal in the left hand side and then our combination of terminal and the non-terminal in the right hand side. So, that is our protection rule or else we will call this as a substitution rule because we are substituting that rule in our gra grammar. Next, yes is nothing but what now start symbol. So, let me take one few examples. So, here I have taken with few examples like what first uh, grammar uh, I have taken here capital A. So, capital A in the place of N which is a non-terminal. Then T in the place of terminal. So, A, B, C is a terminal. Next, P production rule I have written there. A implies A capital A and then capital A implies A, B, C. So, these are the production rule. Next, A is a starting symbol because starting we having what? A. So, the starting symbol will be A. Similarly, for our second example. So, here also we are taking with what? S. Yes. So, S yes is a non-terminal. T is a terminal. So, we having A, B as a terminal. Then P is a production rule. So, what production rule here we having? A, S, A and then B, S, B and then epsilon. So, these are the production rule we have it. So, and then the third example like SF which will be the non-terminal and T here 0 1 will be the terminal and P will be the production rule where I have written there 0 0 S 1 1 F and then F implies 0 0 F and then this, this P is the production rule and here S is nothing but the starting symbol. So, here we have started with what S. Yes. So, we have written here with what S. Yes. Okay. So, this is about what na introduction to context free grammar. So, next we are going to see the introduction to context free language. So, what is meant by this context free language? So, context free language is nothing but the language that can be recognized by the context free grammar or non deterministic push down automata. So, shortly we will be calling that as NPDA. Okay. So, shortly if you want to say means the language which is accepting the context free grammar is called the context free language. So, next we are going to see the conversion of CFL to CFG. So, our first problem is construct a CFG for a language having any number of A's over the set sigma equal to A. So, which means we can have 1A, 2A or 3A. So, like that it goes on. So, sigma is nothing but what na? Alphabet. So, alphabet is represented as a sigma. So, here we will be using only this small a. So, we have written that alone in the sigma. 
So, where the regular expression I can write for this language as A star. So, the given question is a context free language. So, for that I need to represent it in a context free grammar which is G equal to N T P S. So, what is meant by N? As I said before, N is a non-terminal, T is a terminal, P is a production rule and S is the starting symbol. Okay. So, for this language first I need to write the production rule. So, how I am writing the production rule means A implies A A. So, again I can substitute A implies A A. So, A A A. Okay. So, lastly if I want to end means I can close this with epsilon. Okay. So, like that I have written the production rule or substitution rule. I am going to check whether the rule what I have written is right or wrong. So, for that I am having the string over there. The I am taking 6 A's. I am going to substitute this production rule and I am going to see whether the rule what I have written is right or wrong. So, first I am taking this rule 1 where I have written A implies A capital A. And again substituting the rule 1 A in the place of capital A again I am substituting small a capital A. And again I am taking this rule 1 in the place of capital A substituting small a capital A. So, like that it goes on. So, it wants one end at the last. So, lastly I am substituting this epsilon. So, epsilon is like what na nothing. So, I am substituting in the place of a like epsilon where I am using the rule 2. So, which means a a a a a a. So, totally 6 a's which is my target. So, I have got the final string. So, which means the rule what I have written is right. So, based on this production rule, I need to write the remaining non-terminal terminal and the start symbol. So, what is my non-terminal? So, here I have started with the capital A. So, capital A will be the non-terminal. Next, what will be my terminal? What are the things I have used in my production rule? Small a and then epsilon. So, small a epsilon will be the terminal. And then P is nothing but the set of production rule. And S is nothing but the starting symbol. What is the starting symbol? Here I have taken capital A. So, capital A will be the starting symbol. So, next finally I am writing this all this context free grammar in uh, terms of NTPS. So, my N is A, my T is A epsilon, my P is I have written here and here my start symbol is A. So, this is how I need to write for context free grammar from the context free language. This is a very very simple example. Next example we will see. So, next example is like construct the context free grammar for the language L equal to A power N B power N where N greater than equal to 0. Meaning is what we are going to substitute N equal to 0 means what will come. B equal to 0 means what will come. So, like that we are going to substitute okay, for n equal to 0, n equal to 1, n equal to 2 like that we are going to substitute. So, see here I am substituting here n equal to 0 in the place of a power n, b power n. So, which will be like a power 0 in max it will be 1. But here in our TOC a power 0 which is nothing but epsilon. So, a power 0 also epsilon, b power 0 also epsilon. So, it will be finally only 1 epsilon for n equal to 0. So, n equal to 1 means a power 1, b power 1 which we will be writing like a b. Next n equal to 2 means a power 2, b power 2 which is a a b b. Next n equal to 3 means a power 3, b power 3 which is 3 a's and then 3 b's. Meaning is what we need to have one conclusion. Number of a's is equal to number of b's and another thing what we are observing first a is followed by b. Okay, so, this is the thing we are observing from, from this context free language. So, based on this I am going to write my production rule first. In before uh, question we have written like A capital A, A implies A capital A, A implies epsilon because there many number of A's 1A or 2A, but here the A number of A's is equal to number of B's and A should be followed by B's. So, here I am writing A capital A implies A capital A B and then A implies epsilon. Meaning is what first A and then capital A instead of capital A again I can substitute the 
same room. So, it wants to come to one end. So, in that meaning, I am just substituting this epsilon over there because epsilon is also part of my word. So, what are the words will be constructed now? Epsilon A, B, A, A, B, B like that. These are the words constructed from this context free language. So, now I am going to check whether this production rule is right or wrong. So, I am going to take one string for 3A followed by 3Bs. So, I am starting with the rule 1, A implies A, A, B. Okay. So, where I am substituting again instead of that capital A non-terminal, I am substituting A, A, B. And then again the same rule, A, A, B instead of capital A. So, lastly instead of that capital A non-terminal, I am just substituting the epsilon. So, finally, I am getting 3A followed by 3Bs which is my target, so which I got. So, I can say this production rule is right. So, based on this production rule, remaining thing I need to write. What are the remaining thing? My context free grammar is represented as N comma T comma P comma S. So, my N is what? Non-terminal. So, what is the non-terminal here? A. So, I need to write here as A. This is not S, A. Next T, what are the terminals A, B, Epsilon. So, I need to write A, B, Epsilon and P is the production rule and S is here was what? Here I have used A. So, here the context free grammar here is A and then A comma B comma Epsilon is a set of terminal and P is a set of production and A is a starting symbol. Okay. So, here this is not S, this is A and similarly for non-terminal this is A from the set of protection rule. So, this is about our second problem. Next, we will move on to the third one. So, in before case, the same thing only, but we saw for n greater than equal to 0, starting from n equal to 0. But in this question, same language, but we are taking n equal to 1, starting will be n equal to 1. So, epsilon will not come here. So, see here, in before production rule, we have taken A implies A capital A B, A implies epsilon. But here instead of epsilon, if I am substituting epsilon in the place of capital A, what will be the thing A B? So, I am writing A implies A B. Why? Because N equal to 1. If I am substituting N equal to 1 over here means A power 1, B power 1 will be A B. So, starting word itself A B, it is not epsilon. So, I am writing instead of capital A implies epsilon, I am writing capital A implies AB. So, I am going to check whether this production rule is right or wrong. So, I am going to take the uh, string like 4A followed by 4Bs. So, I am starting with A and then capital A and then B according to the rule when rule 1, I am substituting for capital A the same rule 1. At last, for capital A, I am just substituting this second rule AB. So, finally, I am getting the targeted string 4A, 4B. Not only for this string, whatever the uh, word we are getting for AB or 2A is followed by 2B for that also we can check. Okay. What is the purpose of that? Now, we are checking whether my production rule I have written is right or wrong. So, based on this production rule, I need to write the non-terminal, terminal and then the starting symbol. So, my non-terminal is what from that again the capital A and then the T is what A and then B and then my starting symbol will be what this capital A. Okay. So, here I have written in previous slide also this one is right. So, this is not yes, this is what A according to my production rule. Okay. So, this is about the con uh, conversion of context free language to context free grammar. So, in this video, we have shown the definition of uh, context-free grammar, context-free language and three problems related to our conversion. In our next video, we will see more problems related to this conversions. Thank you.